So, tell me some things you believe. Okay, okay, okay. I believe Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player that ever lived. That the King James Version of the Bible is the best. That watermelon is disgusting. And that fried chicken gizzards are the most underappreciated Southern delicacy. Why am I even married to you? Because you love me. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that in a minute. But first, we're going to talk about beliefs, knowledge, and faith, and how they're similar, and how are these things different. Okay, first of all, I love this conversation, and it's such an important one. Uh, while people may define these things you know, differently, depending on who you're talking to, for our purposes today, we're going to start with uh, belief, and we're going to say that that is the weakest. You know, they are often based on feelings. Beliefs can change. You, you can believe things that aren't even true, like there are people who believe the earth is flat, for example. Um, in some cases, a belief can be just as true for one person as it is false for another person, like, you know, whether MJ or LeBron is a better basketball player. Or whether chicken gizzards are even a food, Look, because they delicious. are disgusting. Delicious. So, that's how we're defining belief. We're be defining belief as something that's based strictly on feelings, just for the purposes of this conversation, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and, and therefore, they're very changeable. Uh, we'll define knowledge as kind of a step up from that. Uh, it's empirical. It's something that you can uh, get with your senses. You can see it, hear it, taste it, touch it, whatever. Uh, things that are mathematical and scientific are also empirical. Things like, um, you know, what temperature it is outside or that a chicken lays an egg. Right. Uh, well, what about faith? Okay, so for the purposes of this conversation, we're saying that faith combines belief and knowledge. And I'm saying that belief is, excuse me, that faith is where belief and knowledge meet in the road. So in other words, faith uses what we know to inform what we believe. Mm -hmm. True faith shows unwavering conviction even when it involves things we can't prove. So wait. Uh, so if you can't prove it, it can still be real? Well, of course it can. So let's take love, for example. Like you pointed out before, I love you even though you eat chicken gizzards. And you love me even though I think sports ball games are totally boring and pointless. Sports ball games are excellent and go Braves and chicken gizzards are amazing. Uh, <laughs> so so taking, the, taking the love example for a minute, uh, if I limited love to just what I believe based on my feelings, I might be tempted to believe, you know, that that I don't love you or you don't love me when we have an argument. Uh, I mean, arguments can feel pretty bad when you're having them. Uh, so if love depends only on what I believe in the moment, uh, you know, that could change more often than the weather. That's true. And so belief wouldn't take you very far in a marriage. Mm -hmm. But what about knowledge? Let's apply our definition of knowledge to mm -hmm. love. And you know that I love you based on the fact that I've done loving things for you and you've experienced those things firsthand, but is my love limited to that? Is my love a collection of gifts I've given you and the fact that I make the coffee in the morning? I would argue that it's more than that because my love also involves a lot of other things, like things that I'm willing to do for you and our family because I love y'all but haven't done them yet, so you don't have any empirical proof that I would. Right, so to really begin to understand something as big and complex as love, um, we have to, first of all, understand that, you know, we can't quantify that necessarily. Mm -hmm. We can't, it's, it's not all tangible all the time. And we have to combine both our knowledge and our belief. Uh, so when I say I love you, I'm really saying my love is not based on just my beliefs or just my knowledge, but both on both together. I have faith in our love and, and on your love for me. And I want you to have faith in my love for you as well. Right, but that's not that romantic, so don't put it on a valentine. Okay, okay. okay. Um, let's use the same concept, though, and apply it to whether God exists. All right, we're getting deep now. So first we'll look at a couple of scriptures. I'll even read them from the King James Version because I love Thank you, baby. You. You're welcome. First, we have Matthew 18, 20, which says, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And we're going to add to that 1 John 4, 7, which says, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So it's kind of interesting that we made it back to love or loveth again. Interesting, but not really surprising. You know, these scriptures again are asking us to combine our beliefs and our knowledge into faith. The Matthew passage starts with our beliefs. So if we say we believe in God, we will gather in his name. Uh, the verse promises... Uh, he will be present 
uh, with us if we do that. So the scripture is offering us knowledge that he will be there, but just like our understanding of love, we have to combine our belief with our knowledge to really act on it. Right, and the passage in John is almost kind of flipped on its head, same concept, but flipped. It starts out with knowledge. And I say that because the whole argument is based on whether love exists. And I mean, I really don't know anybody who would argue right. whether love exists. So if we know that love exists, then we must know that God exists. And if God is love and love is God, then we'd better act on that faith and love one another. That's confusing. It really, it's really confusing. And it took us a really long time to try to figure out how to kind of explain this. But I think that's also because things are intertwined. Like we started out trying to kind of separate belief from knowledge and from faith at the beginning of the conversation so we could even try to have the conversation. Right. And, and so many people try to put uh, God in a box when we're going back to talking about the existence of God. Non-Christians, even Christians sometimes, require or try to find proof that God exists that we put our hands on. Uh, but I would argue that it would be harder to prove God doesn't exist than prove that he does. So when people ask me, you know, how do you know God exists? I always respond with, how do you know he doesn't? Our knowing God doesn't require proof or knowing everything about his nature. It's a personal relationship that we pursue through prayer, Bible study, and through how we treat the people around us. <clears throat> and it's so much more than a feeling too. Sometimes you can feel very close to God, sometimes far away. Those are human shortcomings. Uh, God's realness it doesn't change based on how we feel about it. It doesn't change the sacrifice Jesus made for us on the cross or that the only way to heaven is to accept that sacrifice. <clears throat> Those are true always. Um, there's one more verse I'd like to share on that point, and that's in 2 Timothy 1.12. Uh, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Kind of a complicated verse, but this is a letter from Paul talking about how much he's willing to sacrifice or to, so willing to suffer for Christ's sake because he knew he be, uh, who he believed in. He knew he believed in Christ. And, you know, Paul is saying that he is persuaded or he has accepted that Christ's sacrifice for him has, has covered his sin and that, you know, <clears throat> keep that which I've committed unto him against that day means, you know, I believe in this sacrifice and I know that, that, uh, that Christ is going to hold up to his end of the bargain, you know, when the time comes uh, in, in eternity. Right, and that's really what faith is. It's a product of what we believe and what we know. And, and the truth of the matter is we can never know anything and we certainly shouldn't believe everything. We can. Did I say we can never know anything? I meant we can never know, know everything. everything. <laughs> I certainly hope we can know some things. Right. But we can step out on faith because we can take that little box of things we know and the big cloud of things we believe and we combine them to create something that is greater than either of those things alone and that's faith in the truth. Right. Wanna pray? Yeah, let's, let's end with a prayer today. If you'll bow your heads and join me, please. Um, Lord, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity that we have to um, think about your word. Uh, we thank you for the ways that you have revealed yourself to us, and um, we ask that you would every day, day by day, teach us a little bit more about you, uh, teach us better how to love one another, and we thank you for the opportunity to do that. We love you. Amen.